Welcome back to the channel. So I've been tiptoeing around this project a little bit, trying to fix the minimum number of things that could be fixed in order to get a legitimate dyno baseline on the car. And yesterday, after fixing the cooling system, pretty well every part in the cooling system, putting a new harmonic balancer on it and replacing the fuel pump, I've got a car that runs pretty good. So I had it on the dyno, it made a believable baseline dyno number. So now we've got a baseline. We're gonna start making a few changes to the car, changes that you might make on your own car or that you may have heard about. And we're gonna dyno it at each step along the way and see how we do with each one of these changes. The first thing that I did was replace the cap and rotor. That was a real easy change. While I had the car on here for the baseline, it made either no difference or a very nominal difference, even though the cap looked pretty bad on the car. I'm gonna try a full standard tune-up, uh, cap, rotor, plugs, wires, all of those components, and we'll see if just getting good ignition components in the car is enough to add any power to it. Now, when you take the plugs out of a car, especially one like this, where you're trying to determine if everything's all right with the car, I like to lay them out in the order that they came out so you can keep everything straight. That way, if you've got one plug that looks different from the others, it's easier for you to determine which cylinder that came out of so you can give that cylinder a little bit of special attention when you're examining things. Now, all these plugs look pretty white. They all look pretty white to me. That's to be expected. The car was run very lean, like 20 PSI of fuel pressure. Surprised it ran at all. Numbers seven and eight, that's these two, were loose in there. And actually, they're different plugs. You see this? These plugs have a different reach. They're different plugs. They're not the same. I'm pretty sure this is the right plug for the car. And this one isn't. And these two that were longer were also loose. Hopefully that hasn't led to some kind of a problem. Now, I don't see any mechanical interference on the end of these plugs, like the long reach had resulted in hitting the electrodes. So I'm guessing that this is just a wrong plug that didn't work right but not a disaster. However, <laughs> that's why you gotta do this kind of stuff. Don't just trust that everything's right. I have a whole video on spark plugs and this kind of stuff happens all the time. Mix and match plugs, the wrong plugs, the wrong reach, etc. Now let's have a little look at what the gap is on them. So I'll get my gap tool here. They look pretty wide to me. 45 would be the correct factory gap. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have to go to the feeler gauges. Okay, we're gonna throw these away anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, they're gapped 55 or even a little wider. Two of these plugs are different from the others. Probably the wrong plugs. They were also loose. The spark plugs look like a mess. Now these are platinum plugs, and that's clearly somebody's idea of a plug that's gonna last a long time. But here's one of the problems with platinum plugs. If something goes terribly wrong inside the motor, like it runs lean, for instance, or maybe you got a nitrous car where the fuel jet doesn't work or the nitrous sticks on or whatever, the plugs are quite resistant to failure. So what happens is the car will start burning whatever metallic thing is the easiest to burn. With plugs like this, is gonna start burning up the pistons. With regular copper core plugs, it'll burn the ground strap off and the plug will stop firing. Now shut that cylinder down. It gives you a little bit more of a chance of getting away with something that's wrong. So we're gonna put uh, NGK copper core plugs in here, um, TR5 or UR5, I guess they are. Um, that's just slightly colder than the dead stock heat range for this car it's, uh, should be about right. We'll gap them at 45, which is where they should be gapped. These are gapped a little on the wide side. And then hopefully we're gonna get a performance improvement just because of that. 
I've got these NGK UR5s to go in here. They're the correct plug for this application. They're just ever so slightly colder than the pure stock plugs, which I think are specified as UR45. This is a new NGK plug that's right for this application. The one on the on this side, the used one, is out of cylinder eight. It's clearly the wrong reach. What a clown show, eh? <laughs> oh my God. All right, so we've got a brand new set of NGK UR5 plugs and a brand new set of Motorcraft, Ford Motorcraft wires, eight millimeter wires, a new cap, rotors, everything. So when we fire this up, we've basically done a traditional tune-up on the car. We'll see if it does any better. So here's a quick look at the data log on the car. You can see the uh, Lambda PS, Lam Lambda SE, PS and DS. That's the driver side and passenger side short-term fuel trim or commanded AFR. The CAM RF, that's your long-term trim, which is your learn trim. Your injector pulse, that's in milliseconds. And your HEGO sensors there are in volts. And you can see that both of those sensors are switching between a little over half a volt and a little under half a volt. So we've got decent control on this. Uh, in order to achieve that stoichiometric level, both banks are commanded pretty close to stoichiometric. You can see our temperature starting to come up. It's 156 degrees now. Our math voltage, 0.85 or, or so, and moving around a little bit. That's completely reasonable. You see our spark dancing around 17, 20, that kind of thing. That's totally reasonable. Our barometric sensor says 26.5. That's actually approximately the absolute barometric pressure here in Calgary, so that's completely reasonable. Our system voltage, 14.2 almost. Even though it has a crappy alternator, that's perfectly fine. And maybe the biggest thing here that looks like it's off is the throttle position sensor, which we can see is 0.73 volts. So we would sooner have that be a little bit higher. Closer to one volt, like 0.92 or something like that would be about right. In any event, what this suggests is that the car is running about right and all of the major channels are about right. You see our, our temperatures, air charge at the top, engine coolant at the top. Those all look completely reasonable for the car in the state that it is. So I think uh, we got a car that's more or less running okay. So I made one tiny adjustment to the uh, throttle position sensor. I just backed off the screws, turned it a little bit, and now I got 0.889 volts sitting here at a steady state idle. I think we're gonna leave it like that. That's gonna be okay for what we're gonna do. Now, even though I have the data log on here, I have a straight up A9P read in this, uh, loaded on this tool. So the car is exactly as it would be with the stock PCM. Basically, we got nothing <laughs> for the physical uh, parts tune up. I'm not sure why the cap looked terrible. It had two completely wrong plugs in it and uh, those two plugs were loose. So I don't know why we didn't get a, a significant gain just from those parts, but we didn't. Probably the reason is that for whatever reason, the car was running way too rich. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss out on future videos.